Hello everyone, we will discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of the irrigation. So let's start. Now when we talk about the every irrigation project and for that sake every civil engineering project that is designed keeping in view of its economics. That means what is the cost to benefit ratio of the designing that we are carrying out. That means we will list out the expenditure which is likely to be incurred and we will look at the benefits that are likely to occur. Whenever we are investing the capital, capital that means the money that we are investing, so the capital investment on any project and the future charges they will be because of the maintenance and the operation for the undergoing operation. The project estimate is inclusive of both of them. This project is generally sanctioned when the benefit gives at least about 8% of the interest. That means if you are investing 100 rupees on the irrigation project, because here we are talking about the irrigation project. So if the 100 rupees are invested, then the return that should be made that should be equal to 108 rupees. That means we are getting 8% interest on the capital that we have invested. However, there is a case that whenever there are unproductive projects, that means if you are investing 100 rupees but you are getting 95 rupees in return only, then also the projects are sanctioned. Then also the projects are sanctioned. Then the question arises that why do we sanction these projects? So the answer to that will be the general public benefits. That means if let's say we have invested the amount on the project that will yield the benefits to the public in general, then we will go ahead with the project. So when we lay out the irrigation system, then what are the advantages of that and what are the disadvantages that we will take a look. So first of all, we will be discussing about the advantages that we get whenever the irrigation system is designed. So the first of the advantage is the obvious one that is the increase in food production. If you are ensuring the sustained water supply, that means the water supply is continuous. Because of that, there will be increased food production. Since we are providing the sustained water availability, that means the water is available because of the irrigation. That means we are providing the sustained water availability. That means the water is available for 24 7 because of the irrigation system. That will result in the increased yield of the crops and obviously that will increase the food production. Second of the advantage is the optimum benefits. So there is a curve between the amount of water that has been added and the yield of the crop. So if we plot the amount of water that is added onto the field on y axis and the yield of the crop on the y axis and with increase in the amount of water the yield of the crop is increased but that increases up to a certain limit after that with increase in the amount of water the yield decreases so that is the proper curve between the yield of the crop and the amount of the water so we need to achieve this optimum level of the water that has to be made available during the irrigation system. So this amount of water, so this availability of the water that will yield in the optimum benefits to the crops. So that is the second advantage. Third is the elimination of the mixed cropping. So first of all, what is this mixed cropping? So as you can look at the diagram that this field that has been shown here that is having different rows of the different crops so that means this is the first of the crop this is the second one then again first and then again second this is the alternate layers of the or alternate rows of the different crops similarly on the left side picture you can look at this this is the first type of crop that has been grown here and this is the second type of crop that has been grown here this is the third one and this is the fourth one so in total there are four type of crops which have been grown here. So sowing of the crops on a same field during the same time that is known as the mixed cropping. So question that should come to your mind that 
why do we perform this kind of thing? this is done to ensure that the farmer get at least minimum of the yield let's say second of the crop that has been sown here that does not require very high amount of water that means the, the water required by the second crop that is very low so if let's say there is lesser rainfall in that case this second crop that will certainly yield some benefits to the farmer and if first and third crop they are requiring the higher amount of water and they are dependent upon the rainfall so if the rainfall is there then that means first and third crop that means the first and third crop that will yield the great benefits to the farmer otherwise they will not so the farmer in an attempt to maximize his yield he tries to perform this mixed cropping but if we are ensuring the sustained water availability that is the main purpose of the irrigation so if we are making the water available at the sustained quantity and for the sustained duration then this mixed cropping can be avoided this mixed crop is harmful to the field nutrients because if you are aware then you must be getting this that the that the nutrients which are required by the crops from the field they are nitrogen phosphorus and the potassium out of these three all the crops require the nitrogen in the most of the quantity so if different crops are requiring different amount of nutrients then they will be seeking out all of the nutrients at once while if we sow only one crop at a time then what would be the advantage that the particular crop that will suck out the a limited number of new nutrients and during the rest of the period they will be recharged so this mixed cropping is to be avoided and that can be avoided with the help of the irrigation system then the next of the advantage is the generation of the hydroelectric power now the basic principle of the hydroelectric power is that you must have a turbine this is the turbine so the basic principle of the hydroelectric power is that you must have a turbine and the water is made to fall onto this and because of which this turbine is rotating so this rotation of the turbine that gives the mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is converted into the electrical energy this is the main principle of the hydroelectric power so that means what we need to have is the drop in the water level so that the water can be made to fall onto these turbines so these type of structures that you might have observed these are known as the canal falls so during the canal construction we prefer to have certain canal falls at some locations so that we can have the hydroelectric power generation from them for example you can take a look at the sarda canal that is a prominent example in the uttar pradesh state where the hydroelectric power is generated in a huge quantity the next of the advantage is the domestic water since we are ensuring the irrigation water since we are ensuring the supply of the irrigation water that irrigation water can be rerouted to the households so as to cater to the domestic water demand then next one is the general prosperity this is the general advantage of the irrigation because if there is increased self production because if there is increased food production that will make the livelihood of the 70% of the population which is dependent upon the agriculture a more prosperous then the facilities of the communication so whenever you come across a canal system like this if you come across a canal system like this then you might have observed that there is some inspection road on the both the banks of the canal system so that inspection road is so this inspection road on both the sides of the bank that is provided so as to have the maintenance visits to the canal system however that maintenance visit however that inspection road that is provided on the sidelines of the canal system this is the inspection road so this inspection road is further used by the different modes of the communication so that means this canal system also provides for the facilities of the communication as you can observe here that this is used for the inland navigation that means through the water you can navigate and this is the one of the advantages of the irrigation system next of the advantage is the afforestation so if you are having the canal system running smoothly then that means 
there will be certain so if you are having irrigation system running smoothly then that means you will be having certain water courses which will be contributing towards the irrigation system so the area through which these water courses will be flowing through they will be producing the afforestation they will be doing the afforestation at those locations so as you can see here if you look at the difference between the photos here so because of the sustained water that is coming through these water channels so that has increased the greenery here so that is a result of the irrigation system now we'll study about the disadvantages and the ill effects of the irrigation so if we are allowing the irrigation to take place then that may lead in a numerous ways to the water pollution water pollution because of the nutrients that we are adding you might have observed that the whenever the crop is grown then the certain amount of fertilizers is added into the soil so those fertilizers which are carrying off the certain nutrients and of which the prime portion is of the nitrates so those nitrates are leached out to the water and mixed thoroughly with them so that water that is mixed with the nitrate is a home to the algae and that increases the pollution level because it reduces the growth of algae because the growth of the algae that reduces the oxygen level in the water bodies so that water which is contributing towards the irrigation then when it is again joining the water body that is decreasing the oxygen level in that water body so thereby causing the water pollution now whenever we irrigate a field that causes the dampy conditions so that means that is creating a marshy area you might have observed the same that has been shown in the picture here so that may be a home to a number of diseases for example the dengue or malaria because that will be a breeding ground for the mosquitoes so there are chances of the outbreak of the diseases because of the over irrigation now next of the ill effect of the irrigation is the over irrigation if we apply the amount of water then that is required then that will lead to the ponding in the field and that ponding of the water in the field that is known as the water logging as has been shown here this is the example of the water logging so that reduces the growth of the crop as i've shown you that with increase in the amount of water first the yield increases but with the increased amount of water the yield decreases and then the last of the disadvantage of the irrigation system is that the entire irrigation system is very expensive in nature last of the disadvantage is that the entire irrigation system is very expensive in nature so investing on something that, that is very expensive for the public benefit that may reduce the revenue of the government so careful studies have to be taken whenever we are planning an irrigation system for the public benefits so this completes the advantages and disadvantages of the irrigation system in the next video we will take a look at the different type of irrigation system that how do we classify them as major minor and the medium type of irrigation system thank you